had my children with me. Sophia was there and uh, all my children. And, and I wanted my wife to stay because I wanted her company. So I gave her a, uh, a, a, a camera, uh, an, an Eclair 16 millimeter camera. and said, why don't you just shoot all the behind the scenes? And, and she did it really well. She's a very good uh, handheld uh, camera person. But, but it was a little bit of a trick of my part to, to try to have my wife stay with me. And, and so I would come back, if you see her film, I would come back from the shoot and I would come back and say, oh, this is the worst film ever made. I'm gonna get an F for this movie. This movie is, I'm never gonna survive this. And hoping she'd say, oh no, dear, it's gonna be wonderful, you'll see. Instead she would say, oh, let me get the microphone on you. Would you say that again? <laughs> My attitude towards apocalypse of is, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to survive this. The interest, interest rates in those days was 26%. Imagine, I mean, today, wow. what is it, 6%? Those, it was over 26%. And I think I owed about $30 million. And I didn't have any kind of money like that at all. I just was on the hook for it. And, uh, and I was just so, you know, let's face it, I was scared. I had three, I had three kids. A uh, family. I had, I had just bought this beautiful wine estate, which I thought was paradise, and I said, I, and I was sure I was going to lose it. So, I, I, to really accurately say, I wasn't archiving anything except my own misery. I was, <laughs> I was very, very frightened and very depressed. Point is that in filmmaking and in life, extraordinary things happen to you, and it's up to you to make them be positive. Because the good news is that there is no hell. But the quasi good news is, this is heaven. And so make it be heaven, because it's up to you. Don't waste heaven. And the same with the movie, you know. Uh, terrible things happened on that movie, but we always, we always, you know, we, we had heart. There's always the life in the, in, in, in the possible actors in the moment. And you're looking for what you're really looking for the film. It's, it's like Michelangelo's old thing, is you just cut away everything that's not part of the statue. You look for the movie as it's already there trying to talk to you. And in this case, you know, anyone who's worked on a movie knows how as you go along, you start to learn the language of the film. We started to realize that those red smoke grenades and green smoke grenades were part of a style that it was telling us to look at. And, and, and the, uh, of course, we had such extraordinarily talented people, Dean Tavalaris, Vittorio Storaro. They were constantly picking out life and, and, and unique things. And, uh, you know, to look for life is not as, uh, everyone knows when something is phony baloney and when it's real and authentic and alive. And it's just that sometimes the real, authentic, alive thing is not commercial, you think, or is not going to work, or they're not, or they're not going to like it. But you know, that's not that's not the way to do it. If you want to, if you want to make art, you you also have to be comfortable with risk and take a chance that you know best. Clearly, this movie has a special place for you in terms of your. Canon. Um, I look at it. <laughs> I look at it and go, "Wow! You, you know, you weren't just flying close to the sun. You were flying at the sun with intention. Like you, you. When uh, the, all of the things that I've read about it and watched about it, you, you. Uh, I don't know how to ask this. Did you?" It, was it harder than it needed to be? You seem to, you seem to be leaning into how hard it was and embracing that. Like you, you know what I mean? Like it was, well, well, that, that could have gone a lot easier, but you just went the well, other that, way. That's a good question, you know? And I, I would say, I would say the answer to that question, because a lot of times I've thought, what if someone had come to me in that period, when I was making The Godfather and was sure I was going to get fired, or, and I was so miserable. The Godfather, uh, not so much the second Godfather, but the first Godfather and Apocalypse, I, I couldn't have been more miserable wasting those years of my youth. And if someone had said to me, you know, these movies are going to be okay later on, people are going to see them 40 years later, uh, uh, I could have saved so much misery. But maybe, I, I wonder, 
Had they done that, if I would have just, oh, the hell, it's going to be a success. But I kept going and, and staying up all night and trying another ending and trying another version. I just kept trying. Uh, I had a lot of energy and I had a, I have a lot of energy and good imagination. That's about the limit of what I have. And I, and I, and I did keep going back. And, and, and I think your, your question is good. Maybe there was an easy way to get out of this and just kind of, you know, uh, with some degree of honor. But I, I don't know, maybe I had an instinct that this, if I could really get the beauty and the power of, of uh, Conrad, that beautiful novella, in this setting, this extraordinary setting of Vietnam with the surfers and the drugs and the doors and the blue, yellow, green smoke and stuff, Maybe it would be extraordinary. Maybe I sense that. I, I, I didn't want to just do a, a Bridge on the River Kwai ending. I'm not, that's a great movie. Uh, you know, a, a typical World War II movie, Guns of Navarone type ending, just there's a big detachment and there's a big battle and it's over. I wanted it. I also thought the movie was about morality. It wasn't, you know, uh, th there was a line that John Milius told me, and pardon me of my language, uh, the, 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 the officer, the, the line is this, that we teach the boys to drop fire on people, but their commanders won't let them write the word fuck on their airplanes because it's immoral. I thought that was so interesting, and I think that's really the, the, the contradiction of morality which we have in war. I, knew, I think that's what I, I was going about, a film about morality. And, and, and what that meant in these uh, dire conflicts. And I think the fact that I wanted it to be about that, not just a good uh, war adventure, I wanted it to be a film about morality. You know, my whole life I look back and say, I wish I dialed it back a little bit, but I didn't. You know, it's not my nature. I have this one life to lead. I, the fact that I, I feel all of us here, each one of us is a billion to one shot that that sperm got together with that egg and we're, we're, and every one of us is unique. And so to make art that doesn't reflect your personal feelings is pointless. I don't know what, what kind of exercise that is. So you're obligated to, to make what you are. And everyone here is the same. That we were like America with too much money and too much stuff going in fighting that, that, that battle there, uh, and, and, and I was, it was clear that making of the film was very much like I was participating in, in a, a, a Vietnam-type war. Well, I don't know what to say other than you gambled and you won. Well, thank you. Thank you.